and I have, in fact, left out one of them, who I can now at last thank publicly as well. The person, the woman who is the curator of the exhibition, co-editor of our book, author and head of the research team, Chloe Pitio. Certified architect who holds a PhD in the history of contemporary architecture, Chloe Pitio's curatorial career began in 2010 at the Centre Pompidou, where she held the position of design curator. In 2018, she became the curator in charge of the modern and contemporary collections at the Musée des Arts Décoratifs in Paris. It has been a privilege for me to work collaboratively with her on this project. Her curatorial vision has shaped this project and her pursuit of knowledge on Eileen Gray has been essential to its realization. As a curator working for a major museum, it is challenging to organize a temporary exhibition such as this one, but to do that simultaneously while moving to a new institution where you were first expected to reinstall permanent collection galleries and then curate three exhibitions, including one in Abu Dhabi, seems humanly impossible, but she did all of that. I am so happy to invite to the podium as our speaker the indefatigable and incomparable Chloe Pizio. Thank you. And uh, I worked with him for uh, 10 years. He was the estate of Eileen Gray. He knew him, uh, her very well. So he's not here, but I think he's still here with us. And uh, thanks to him, we could have a lot of information, archives, and uh, uh, anecdote on uh, Eileen Gray. Uh, the first people after Peter I met for this project uh, is Cesca Valois, a gallerist in Paris. Uh, she met also Eileen Gray a uh, few times, and uh, I want to thank her. She's not here in New York, but I know she's here with us. Uh, I want to thank you a lot of people. It's too long, but Nina did it. Uh, but here in this room, it would have been also impossible to do the project without Jennifer Goff, who has a PhD, and uh, she will explain you what she uh, studied. And uh, it was um, very important for me to have a discussion with her. And uh, for 10 years, we discussed night and day on Island Gray. Also, Renaud Barres, who is an architect, a French architect, and we worked a lot together on the Villa E1027. Uh, and Philippe Garner, who did a book uh, on Island Gray, is in the scientific committee, also with Caroline Constant. Uh, who did a book on Eileen Gray. So we did a team with different generation of researchers. Uh, and they, what is magical with Eileen Gray uh, at this time, it's uh, for 10 years now, it was possible to, to discuss between Ireland, England, France, America with different researchers and to build a story of Eileen Gray because I think she's so complex that we have to, to continue to, to, to work on her. So what I want to tell you this morning is uh, how I worked and uh, uh, what I discovered uh, this last 10 years. So she is Eileen Gray. Uh, the photo is a flu, we said. Uh, and uh, I think it's a good photogra photography for her because her life is like that and her work too. It's not simple to discover what she, what she did because a lot of archives has uh, disappeared during the, the war and also she burned a lot of things. So to go uh, in, uh, in, in the life and the work of Eileen Gray, it's quite difficult. So have, you have to, 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 to go like, uh, to do a journey in fact, and to imagine a new kind of researches. Um, so there is two things. Uh, how I did my research and uh, how I enshrined in the work of Eileen Gray. The beginning is that she was an artist, so she was uh, doing uh, um, paintings and she was working with paper. Uh, and the, the paper began after three years, maybe four years, when she was uh, learning lacquer, a panel of lacquer. So uh, after the panel of lacquer, she decided to articulate the panel of lacquer to do screens. So she began from the two dimension to the three dimensions. And uh, after panel of lacquer, she did um, uh, different um, uh, things. She, she, she traveled a lot and she came back from uh, North Africa uh, and she opened the studio of carpet in 1910 in Paris and also 
a studio of lacquer with Seto Sugawara, Japanese lacquer, in 1910 also. Uh, after that, uh, she moved to the abstraction in 1914 uh, with um, special works, the, the Destin, a special screen with a face with uh, figurative art and another one with abstraction. And uh, she ever did abstraction with uh, carpets because she said that it was impossible to work on people if you do some uh, figurative uh, 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 conception on carpets. And uh, after pieces of furniture, she moved to uh, set design and uh, interior design, and after that to architecture, uh, houses, small houses, and after that uh, with um, uh, bigger projects in uh, um, building uh, or centre de vacances, uh, vacancy centres, um, and uh, also building for workers. We don't know where they are, if one day they were uh, built or, or not. We have to looking for them. Uh, and uh, I wanted to finish um, oh, uh, uh, with uh, photographies and with paintings to explain you that uh, all along her uh, life, she was doing uh, art and uh, paintings and photographies. And this area is for me still um, in, the, in the dark or, or in the shadow, and we have to continue to work also on this part of the of the work. Um, after just quickly to explain you uh, how I did uh, this re uh, research, uh, first I went to a National Museum in Dublin. After in uh, uh, Victoria and Albert Museum because they are here the archive uh, of Eileen Gray, but a lot of period uh, 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 have disappeared. So uh, in my mind, I said, how to do when you don't have the material to do a research? So I tried to imagine uh, the life of Alingue, which which uh, person she was in contact, and I went in the archives of those per, uh, persons, those people, artists, writers, uh, um, uh, in contact with the Alingue. So um, I went to uh, for the pieces, and uh, I went to the Vitra Museum, Victoria and Albert, uh, the Riba for the architecture, Bristol Museum, Portsmouth City Museum, Leicester Museum. They have pieces of furniture, uh, screens, and uh, in the United States, um, the Museum of Modern Art, the Metropolitan, the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts, and the Merrill Museum. I will tell you more after about this one. Uh, in France, the Musée National d'Art Moderne, the Musée des Arts Décoratifs, and in Ireland, where they are the most important collection of uh, pieces of furniture and archive, uh, the Musée National uh, d'Irlande, the National Museum of Ireland. After, for the archive, it, it, it was a long trip uh, between uh, uh, Europe and, the, and the America. So, England, Ireland, for Jean Badovici, I went to the Getty uh, Research Institute, to a uh, small village in France, uh, for Alma de Bredwich Pertekels uh, and uh, San Francisco. So, you will see here all the names uh, uh, of people. Uh, I studied, so Jacques Doucet, Louis Fuller, the American dancer, Stephen Hoyce, we went to Colombia with Jennifer Goff, Kishizo Inagaki, who was the cabinet maker of Eileen Gray, uh, Juliette Levy, a client of her, Rodin, very important in the life of Eileen Gray, Evelyn Wilde, who was uh, the woman uh, with whom she did uh, the carpet studio, and a lot of library also to find books and review to explain uh, the, the life of Eileen Gray uh, between uh, the beginning, la, beginning of last century to the end of the 20s. So after what we discover, it, uh, she was more close to uh, British networks and American networks than French networks. And a lot of people studied Eileen Gray in France, so with the French networks. And I think it was uh, thanks to Jennifer better to go in England and in Ireland to understand the, 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 the world of Eileen Gray. So Gerald Festus Kelly and Alastair Crowley uh, were in Paris at the same time uh, in 1903-1904 with Eileen Gray. Uh, Alastair Crowley was very close to her and uh, he was writer, painter and develop, he developed a lot of uh, theosophic subjects uh, and uh, we found a lot of detail um, on Eileen Gray uh, works uh, coming from Alastair Crowley. 
like a carpet uh, which is calling black magic and this is the spirituality of Vilingue. When you have to go in uh, the other world of Vilingue, you have to, to, to know what Alastair Crowley did. Uh, another person very important is Stephen Hoyce. Uh, the archive are in Columbia University and they exchanged a lot of letters uh, in the 50s, uh, 40s, or for the beginning, but we have the later letters. And uh, they were speaking a lot and a lot on the painting and uh, on the life after the life. So it was also interesting to understand that Eileen Gray was very connected to a new kind of, of uh, spirituality, spirituality and philosophy. And this uh, spirituality was connected to the research of mathematicians like Poincaré in the beginning of last century on the fourth dimension. And you could uh, find in uh, uh, architecture this dimension of a fourth dimension. Um, Oh, the woman just uh, here is Loi, uh, Mina Loy, uh, poetry, uh, wife of Stephen Hoyce. So uh, by Mina Loy, she was connected to the, an English uh, movement of writers, the Imagist, and the Imagist was using codes in their uh, poetry, and Alingwe put codes everywhere in uh, uh, her architecture and uh, her design. Uh, after. The links between Eileen Gray and Rodin. Uh, I went to the Musée Rodin in Paris and I found this letter where Eileen Gray is uh, telling that she wants to build uh, a sculpture, La Petite Danaïde, that you could see in the show uh, at the beginning. And she explains that the Danaïde, this one, uh, will be the beginning of her education for all the life. So I, uh, I, I put in the exhibition the drawing that she did in 1904 in Paris and this Danaïde that she uh, bought to Rodin in 1903. So this is very connected to the architecture also of Eileen Gray. And she, I think that uh, she um, uh, go in architecture with soul body and uh, uh, it's not just a uh, scientific art. It's really uh, how you could live uh, as a body and a soul in a specific architecture. Um, after two other very important people in the life of Eileen Gray is Louis Fuller, the American dancer, and Gabrielle Bloch, known also as Gab Sorer. She was a set designer and the partner of uh, Louis Fuller. And uh, they were in charge uh, in uh, between 1912 and 1915 of the shipment of the pieces uh, um, of furniture, which traveled from Paris to San Francisco uh, for the Pan Pacific exhibition. And uh, they were also in charge of the sculpture of Rodin. So at this period, between 1902 and 1915, Rodin, uh, Gabriel Bloch, Louis Fuller, and Eileen Gray was very close for this exhibition in San Francisco. So because, I, oh, yes, I wanted to uh, explain you also that she did a lot of travel. The first uh, flight between uh, Arizona and Mexico, for example, she went to uh, North Africa also. and. Uh, uh, when she was um, in Arizona, I think it was also to prepare this exhibition. And uh, because I did researches uh, with Jennifer in Washington uh, and uh, here in New York on Loi Fuller and Alma de Breglich Spreckels, a collect an American collector in San Francisco, in charge of the pa French pavilion on the exhibition in San Francisco. Finally, after, I want to say, five years of research, I found this amazing panel that Nina went to see in the state of Washington uh, in Mary Hill. So you could uh, discover it. It's the first uh, panel of lacquer that we know on Eileen Gray. Maybe, I'm sure she did other before, but we forgot them. We don't know where they are. So this one is just uh, amazing. Um, it, it was a big discover. And also this one uh, from a private collection uh, in San Francisco. Uh, we saw just last week that the frame of both were the same. So we um, think that they were together in the San Francisco exhibition. And I want to explain you that found panel of lacquer of Eilingue is very difficult, but they did few pa she did few panel of lacquer. Another person very important is Percy Wyndham Lewis. Is um, an English uh, painter, founder of the Vorticism, a movement not so far from futurism, and he is working on the vortex. So you could see uh, the review that he did, uh, Blast, in 1915, 
and uh, uh, on the right, uh, on the top, a painting of uh, uh, Wyndham Lewis, and uh, here in the middle, this is the top uh, of the stair in the roof of the Villa Item 27, not so far from uh, what uh, Percy Wyndham Lewis did, and also in the pieces of furniture of Islingway in the modern period, you could see a lot of pivoting drawers, of pivoting pieces of furniture, and I think it's a di dialogue she had with uh, the painting of Percy Wyndham Lewis that you, you can find uh, in, in, uh, in the work. You could see here how it is. She did this piece of furniture, never known to the public, in the uh, um, beginning of the 30s for uh, a house in Tempe Apaya, uh, in the south of France, and it is in the, in the show. Also, this discover, very important for Heilingway, in 1923, she, she did an exhibition in Paris in the Grand Palais, and uh, she exhibited uh, a bedroom uh, boudoir for Monte Carlo, and we knew at the beginning only one visual of uh, this exhibition, and that uh, we supposed that because she places a lot of mirror in uh, uh, architecture that uh, we that uh, all the pieces were in this space. And when I arrived in the Musée des Arts Décoratifs in Paris to work there uh, one year and a half ago, I discovered this drawing. Uh, and um, thanks to my assistant, she said, Chloe, do you know this, uh, this, uh, this gouache? I suppose it's Eileen Gray, and it is the other part of the Boudoir Monte Carlo. So how uh, here I found the piece. It was here, so this was also a big discover. It's very rare to have a gouache of Eileen Gray, so this is a big gouache, and I think it's it is a treasure. Um, I have five minutes to finish. So uh, just the, the cl client networks. So essentially, American clients, French uh, fashion designer, artist, uh, and. Um, she closed uh, a shop. She opened a shop in 1922, and she closed it in uh, uh, 1930 because uh, French people was wasn't able to understand what she did. She said uh, they were so much turned to the past and not too much to the future. So, also uh, quickly a connection to Dutch uh, movement, Dutch team movement. She did a table, uh, Dutch team table uh, in dialogue with Rietveld, for example, and very connected to. Uh, Wood or Ravenstein, a lot of uh, Dutch architects. You could see here that she did uh, this plan, a new discover also in Vesle. Uh, we suppose that, that she's uh, more involved uh, in this uh, uh, area in France. It was uh, before also um, known as Jean Badovici, and uh, we studied a lot uh, new planes and elevation and photographies that I found in this small village in the center of France. And uh, we suppose that this plan was done by Eileen Gray. And you could see here, you could find it on a screen in the exhibition done at the same period. So there is also here a code. Uh, we found new photographies uh, on Jean Badovici. He was, like Eileen Gray, quite unknown. Uh, and uh, so here we have a man alive with friends in a life in uh, his house. And uh, in another house, uh, they did together in Vesbe. And you could see the house. So I think for the future, if someone want to do a PhD or new research, uh, Vesle will be a good subject. And all the other subjects I, uh, I discovered because I didn't have time to, to, to search more. So also the last discover and uh, the, the biggest, I think, is an interview of uh, Eileen Gray um, by uh, Andrew Hodkinson. Uh, a designer and an architect and not a journalist that I said yesterday. Uh, so when he was young in 1973, uh, he wanted to do an interview uh, and uh, he was a friend of Philip Garner and Philip Garner was in links with Eileen Gray. So he asked to, uh, Andrew to go to see Eileen Gray. And uh, Andrew keep this tape uh, of the interview and uh, we worked on it with Philip Garner and uh, my, ha my husband and with Jennifer to understand how the voice was connected to a portfolio. And the, the play was to, 
uh, mix the voice with the portfolio. And it's very, very funny because uh, what historians imagine for now 40 years, sometimes it's so simple in the voice of Eilingre and so far of what we imagined. So it was a big lesson of humility for me because I, I have a big imagination and every time I said, oh, it will be that and that and that and that. And in the end, it's very simple. She did abstraction because for her, it was impossible to work on figurative uh, carpets. So sometimes it's nice to to return to be a human and not a, a, a searcher. <laughs> and I just wanted to finish by this uh, words uh, written by Jean Badovici, founder of L'Architecture Vivante uh, and a partner of Eilingway for a few uh, years. The role of the artist is to anticipate the eternal movement of emotions to express the secret relation between man and the universe. And I think Eilingue was like, a, I don't know if we say that in English, iPhone between universe and uh, uh, architecture and how people could be uh, great and could have wellness in their architecture. And uh, uh, her heart, I think, is really to help people to be a great uh, soul and body in a, in a space and not a closed, a closed space, not a closed architecture, but an architecture open to the landscape. So thank you. <laughs>